One of the best things about having an artist as an employee is that she comes up with really crazy things that she wants to do for the soaps. And then she gets to do them and I get to ooh and ah. And today is another example of that. But before we talk about what Georgia May created, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Play, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for another round of 365 days of soap. And today is a one of two part series for a recipe and design that George May has done, and it involves soap dough. So today, she is going to be making soap dough and showing you the recipe and the process behind creating a good soap dough. And then tomorrow, she will use said soap dough to make a soapy creation. Now you may be asking yourself, what is soap dough? Now, soap dough, it's soap made by a cold process, like all the rest of my soaps, right? But the recipe formulation is such that it allows it to actually be pliable, like you would expect a clay, or you know, not quite Play-Doh, more actual artist clay, so you can mold it and sculpt it into different shapes. Now, really the most important part of making a soap dough is going to be the recipe formulation. You need to make sure that you select the right oils to allow the soap to maintain some pliability. And Georgia May is going to show you one of our recipes that we love to use for soap dough. So let's go, let's go check it out. Okay, so we are actually going to start with a recipe that I love using. So we've got 15% cocoa butter, 30% coconut oil, 40% olive oil, 10% avocado oil, 5% castor oil in this guy right now. Now, all of those oils were selected for a reason. Um, the biggest reason for the cocoa butter and the coconut oil is that neither one of them have super duper high amounts of stearic acid. They have some, but not a lot. And they also get, uh, when they're you know, applied to, when you apply heat, like with your hands, for example, uh, they get soft and so that helps with the pliability. Avocado oil is going to be the same as well as olive oil, really helping with the, uh, the pliability and the sort of softness of the soap batter itself, or the soap dough, dough rather. And then the castor oil really ups that pliability factor. Castor is a very interesting oil to incorporate into soaps for a number of reasons. For regular soaps, it's good for um, really stabilizing lather and creating a nice lather that stands up on its own. But for soap dough purposes, it really helps create a bar that is, or soap dough rather, that will uh, remain reasonably pliable and you know act like clay, which, which is cool. Now, Georgia May is going to separate these this batch into four different containers. Looks like she's working with white, black, yellow, and orange today and then she's going to cover those and they will set up overnight well they actually don't have to set up overnight she is going to cover those with plastic wrap and they will set up overnight but that is not super necessary you can start playing with soap dough oh about four hours or so after you make them make the batter depending on what your recipe is and how large of a batch you're working with now we are working with a very small batch for this one. It's only about a one pound batch because she's doing, you know, specific stuff. And you know, earlier, earlier when I was introducing the vid or whatever, I said that, you know, recipe formulation is really important. And that is true for soap that is, um, that you are, has an intended purpose. For soap dough that you are 
planning a specific soap out for and or you want to maintain its shelf life as long as possible so keep it pliable as long as possible yes the recipe formulation is is important because not every cold process recipe will stay you know pliable with a dough like consistency for more than you know a few days depending on what you're working with but that said you know how early I cut my soaps now you see me like using the pieces the end pieces to fill in any sort of holes or you know any sort of like nooks and crannies you can if you you know are working with it fresh enough you can make almost any cold process recipe into a soap dough there have been days that I have come into the shop and Georgia May had spent the day, you know, trimming and cutting and doing whatever. And I would come in, you know, the next day and she would have made like roses out of just leftover scraps that she had cut off of the end pieces of loaves. And, you know, she can do it like nobody's business. So you can work with almost any cold process recipe to do, you know, some quick soap dough. But if you are wanting some soap dough that will sort of hang around and, you know, last in a container for a few months so you can use it for multiple projects, you definitely need to pay attention to the recipe. Okay, so these four containers have set up overnight and they are ready to be turned out and kneaded, much like you would knead bread dough and do the thing. Although I don't really think you leave bread dough overnight unless you're making like one of those fermented bread things like sourdough or something. I don't make bread. And anyway, this has set up overnight and she is now going to work it into a nice uh, workable consistency. And if you find out that the soap dough is too sticky at this point, you have two options. You can let it set up some more, or you can add a little bit of cornstarch, and that helps out. Again, it's the same concept as, you know, rolling out bread or tortillas or what have you. For someone who doesn't bake or doesn't claim to know how to bake and cook and do the things, I certainly know a lot about that. My mother is an excellent baker, so I just, this just reminds me of the things that she does. But anyway, yeah, so you see as she's continuing to work with it and you know the, the heat and the friction and everything, it is molding this into a really nice consistency. It's beautiful. Look how, see that's lovely. That's even, you know, more pliable than like an artist's clay. That's delightful. That's going to be delightful to work with. So that is a winning recipe formulation right there. She is rocking it live. Now she is going to go ahead and cover everything up after you've kneaded it and worked it into you know a nice usable consistency for every color and the reason for that is soap cold process soap as it gets air to it it cures out and hardens and that's you know the whole reason behind the cure time right because soap in and of itself within you know one to two days after pouring it it's safe to use. Saponification has been achieved. There is no more lye remaining in the, the soap, uh, assuming you know you have a, a, a well-balanced recipe. And it's safe to use. But the air is what's going to actually for, continue to harden the bar and you know get it to its final stage. And so when you're working with soap dough, you do want to keep everything wrapped. We actually wrap it and then put it in an airtight container just to keep the pliability going you know, as long as possible so we can use it for you know, multiple projects. So that is the reason for the rewrap. We do not want air to soap dough. And that's the opposite of what you would do with you know, regular cold process soap, like a bar soap or whatever. You wanna get as much air to it as possible, as soon as possible. But that's really the trick um, between regular cold process bars and you know, actual you know, cold process soap dough is essentially the amount of air that is allowed to uh, get into the soaps. And so we're working on not exposing this soap to the air until we absolutely have to. Now, all of these colors have worked really well together. Like, I mean, this is a really, really good consistency for, for soap dough. She's going to be able to do a lot with it, which is good because knowing George May, she is going to do a lot with it. Her uh, her soap dough creations are are never simple. Uh, 
Oh gosh, yeah, they're they're amazing. It's just they are absolute artistry. And she got into a big soap dough kick. Uh, I don't know about eight months ago or so, and decided to do the entire fall line in a Wizard of Oz, you know, theme thing. And these bars were so super themed. There were leaves and tree branches and witch hats and broomsticks and the yellow brick road and poppy seeds and or um, poppies and it was incredible but also an incredible amount of work so for that i think you know soap dough for an everyday you know this is what i'm going to do for my soaps all the time it's quite time consuming it's definitely a, a labor of love to, to do the soap dough thing which was one of the reasons why i never got into this because I this is it's a lot you put a lot into this process right now just the kneading and the prepping of the soap dough and then you have to turn it into something else now sometimes you can do it you know and this is how I do soap dough I use little little tiny molds and, and do the thing and that's awesome and so you just press the soap dough into the uh, into the little molds and then you have like your leaves or whatever but I don't think Georgia May is really happy with that sort of usage of soap dough because it's like what is the point of using soap dough over melt and pour or even you know a liquid you know cold process recipe if you're just going to use a mold so she definitely goes all out with the actual literal building just like with clay of all of her soap dough creations and it is a sight to behold so I am looking forward to seeing what she does with this beautiful soap but as you can see the soap dough itself it's good it, it's pliable it also holds up on itself that is a lovely recipe okay now I'm going to show you what she is going to do with uh, some of the soap dough and she is going to make rubber ducks because she's a crazy person this is <laughs> whatever I really just should stop talking at this point and just let the, the music play and do its thing because honestly watching her in this you know environment and making of the, the soapy things it's very therapeutic and my voice is not therapeutic but also I don't know how to stop talking and I want to ooh and ah right along with you so she is making the body of a rubber duck and you know ooh, maybe that's the head I feel like that's the body and she is going to make the head I'm assuming out of out of this guy and See how, you know, she's so good. She's so good at this. She just, oh yeah, see head, yeah. Now, she's gonna use a little bit of water to actually act as glue to stick one piece to the other. And so as it cures out, as the air continues to be exposed to these, these little ducks, the water glue will help adhere the, you know, heads to the bodies and keep it, you know, them together. So we don't have any you know, beheaded ducks, because that'd be terrible. Really, that would not be, that'd be a fun thing. And now she's going to take her yellow and probably make some wings. That's what I'm thinking she's gonna do. Now, you notice how she took the soap dough and put it right back into the, the stuff that's uh, wrapped up? Yeah, do that. While you are making these soap dough creations only take out the amount that you think that you're going to need and keep everything wrapped up for the reasons that I mentioned earlier you want to keep air away from soap dough so it will stay you know pliable and you know clay like as long as possible and yeah she's totally making the wings on that and that's just so so cute that's gonna be awesome and I'm going to assume that she's also going to use some water to adhere these two. Yeah, look, there we go. I am literally watching this for the first time right along with you guys. So this is, uh, it's fun for me as well. And look at that. Isn't that the cutest little wing? Oh my goodness. The things she comes up with, I swear, it's just, that's just so cute. And 
she's good at it too. If I tried to make a duck, I, it would not go well. Not at all. She makes really cute animals though. She did a uh, cows once, really cute cows. Like they were adorable. They were like, you know, like the black and white Jersey cows. And they even had like the pink udders and these happy smiley faces. And it was amazing. And she did pigs too, that she put in like a, looks like a pig in the mud. Um, so she does really, really cool things. And if I were to attempt that, it just, it, it would not work. I am not an artist. I, you know, I approach all of this from the, the sort of scientific vein and I focus more on performance and you know, ratios and all that jazz. But this is why it is so amazing to have, uh, an artist as an employee and not only an artist, but, uh, she also has a really good mind for science and so she's you know, she's kind of perfect honestly when it's all said and done because she can create amazing art that you ooh and ah at but she also understands the sort of chemistry behind everything that she's doing so it will be more than just pretty it will also be a really awesome you know batch of soap but yeah look at that she's making the cute little beak that's Oh, she's so good. And the, the detail work that comes into this stuff, it's just, it's absolutely, wow. At this point, I'm really hoping that you guys just, you know, turned me off and stopped listening to me and you're just watching her. But again, I don't know how to stop talking and I am ooing and aahing and just absolutely blown away at the stuff that she's she's doing right now so I'm just gonna keep talking and not giving you guys anything of real you know value to say just it's cute she did such a good job now that was an interesting uh, thing that you just watched as part of the sort of artistic and creative process there she was trying to do something with a two build you know with a, a split down the middle and it wasn't working out for her and she was you know the, the duck lips were becoming duck lips and not you know like a duck bill and she changed it on the fly and you know she knew how to fix it and do the thing which I think looks absolutely adorable and then you know the putting of the eyes in but it was funny because the uh, soap and clay kidlets when they saw this they came in the next day and they saw these little ducks and they actually commented on the uh, on the whites like you even put the little whites in the eyes that's so amazing because yeah George May leaves no detail you know undone it's she's just that good she actually is a pro at putting all of the eyes painting eyes onto the pottery that we do for the paint your own pottery stuff when customers come in that's so cute she fixes everybody's creations though because nobody knows how to do eyes and she just fixes it all to make it all you know perfect and make sure that the the clay the painters they they walk away super happy because their their creations are awesome and now she's just gonna make a couple bubbles for the ultimate vision that she has which we will show you know you tomorrow of the actual making of the soaps that these cute you know ducks and bubbles go into but for now that is day 74. That is a soap dough recipe. That is a portion of her awesome creation. And I cannot wait until tomorrow to see what she does with that and how amazing her, you know, duck soaps end up looking and smelling and doing. And there you have it, soap dough. Now I'm really looking forward to seeing what Georgia May does with this tomorrow, and you should too. So definitely subscribe to the channel and make sure you, you get that notification so you can come back and see what soap creation she'll be making. I guarantee it will be awesome. The last time she did soap dough, she started out with little pigs in the mud and she created actual little pigs that went into the top of a, a slab soap. And then she also did a cool Wizard of Oz series where she made hats, like witch hats and broomsticks and the yellow brick road and poppies and that was intense. She's done really cool things with soap dough and I cannot wait to see, you know, what she does with this. And again, you should want to see that too. So subscribe to the channel, 
Come back tomorrow. We will show you all the awesome things. If you are interested in following me on social media, you can do the thing. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you're interested in seeing, you know, what I have in my line right now, you can do that as well at soapandplay.com. And yeah, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 Days of Soap. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.